everyone. Um, so, uh, convention report for Kamorakon, uh, 2019. Um, once again, this as this year as for the past few years held at the Oregon Convention Center, and which I'll have an image of in the in, uh, the on the closing credits. Um, this year the uh, Kamorakon had a partnership with the Oregon Fashion Week. And what this basically means is we had like we had a fashion show last year. We had involvement last year of Japanese fashion labels and that sort of thing. But they're feeling a lot more of a focus on that front here, which is fine. Um like last year we had like a big high profile anime industry guest. Well, technically two. We had Trigger and we had well, Yoshitaka Amano, who's doing a bunch of, like, he's doing a bunch of U.S. conventions, and like, he, he doesn't do that much, I think. I mean, maybe um, San Diego Comic-Con, but, like, he's not... For him to show up at some place like Kamorakon is a super-duper big deal. Never mind Kamorakon auctioning a original Amano painting to raise money for the International School. That was, um, so like, it's not, it's, so that, that's something that's hard to top. And like, we, we didn't get that exactly this year. What we did have, I didn't go to the concert. I wish I had, because we had a idol group as our musical guest this year. We've had visual K bands and that sort of thing. We've never really had like a full on idol group. Uh, Star Marie is the band of the, the group. They had done music for couple seasons of um not a Yu-Gi-Oh series but it's an anime based off of a Japanese um trading card game I want to say um card, yeah, it was card fight Vanguard card fight Vanguard they uh, they have done um opening I think an ending for a couple seasons of that and something else so that and so that was their kind of their their big thing here um, so, hey, I guess who's done an Anna song? That's a big deal. Um, again, I missed the concert for various timing reasons. Um, but other than that, we also had, uh, Charles Dunbar as a, um, basically fandom, for lack of a better term, cultural, cultural slash, um, mechademia, as I guess is the term we call for it, um, after after the journal, uh, guest of honor, um, more heavy in depth anime criticism, uh, history. Talking about anime history, talking about Japanese um, cultural additional information, that sort of thing. I went to most of his panels. Uh, I did not go to his panel. He did a panel about Pokemon and yokai, which I missed, and I, I wish I'd gone to that. And I caught the tail end ish of his magical girl panel but i otherwise i caught all of his panels on uh, hayao miyazaki and his interests uh, influences apocalypse and anime which was one i definitely wanted to set aside time to go and see and he did a panel on shinto and also a panel on um the sort of crossover and between American animation, Japanese animation, and oh, cross pollination, I guess would be the best way to describe it. And I caught that panel as well. Those were all really amazing, really informative panels. Um, viewers back east are who go to lots of back east anime conventions are probably actually fairly familiar, maybe fairly familiar with Dun with Charles Dunbar. He's been on the East Coast circuit for quite some time. Not so much on the West Coast. Um, like we don't get a like these high-profile guests on the West Coast. Like, not just the high-profile guests, but like this high-profile content. We don't... There are, I guess what put is, there's a lot of really, really good panels that will be at an Anime Expo, not Anime Expo, but uh, an Anime NYC, um, New York at slash New York Anime Fest, or an Otakon, or um, Anime Weekend Atlanta, or that sort of thing. These East Coast, these big East Coast conventions that we never quite get the equal back uh, back on the West Coast, here, here on the West Coast. Um, 
And like when I hear about these from like listening to Reverse Thieves podcast and the Enemy World Order podcast, like I get the impression that there is a lot of like heavy anime criticism pan like um sort of panel scene going on on the East Coast, a lot of really engaging informative panels and the high density of like well super well informed super fans on the East Coast. Uh, which we don't get as much here. Um, we get them. I try to hunt down that content when I can find it. But, like, not, like, we get a lot, I notice with you at, with Comoricon, and when I hear from about other West Coast convention channels, we get dub actors a lot, which is fine. Dub actors are cool. We get and we also get the, the cosplay roleplay panels a lot, where it's cosplayers dressed up as characters in character, answering questions, acting out skits, that sort of thing. Which, again, you know what, if that's your thing, I ain't gonna yuck your yum on that. So, but that's not really, doesn't really quite do it for me, but that's okay. But this year, you know, over the last couple of years, we've been having a bigger boost of this kind of higher level cultural content. Uh, we had a mecha, we had a um, academic track last year as well, but it was also a lot more, a lot more of a heavy academic track. Like it was, it's like people bringing their master's dissertations or doctoral dissertations after they've, they've, they've gotten their degrees and presenting them to convention panelists, which on the one hand, like that's neat, but on the other hand, what, what differentiates them from Charles Dunbar is like Charles Dunbar's stuff has been honed for an anime convention audience. And what I mean as opposed to the pre-doctorate doctoral knife fight. And what I mean by that is when you are like when you're presenting an academic doing an academic presentation to your, you know, professors, to your advisors, that's the thing we can't try to get a degree. The goal is to be informative, is to be well-researched, is to argue your points well. It is not necessarily, you are not trying to entertain. You are not trying to entertain a room of 30-something nerds who it does not easily just drift off and go to to the viewing room or the manga library or hit up Artist Sally and the vendor room or go to the panel next door, which is um the cast of JoJo, which is a cosplay group dressed as the, the cast of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure doing sketches. That sort of thing. So you got, you also got to be entertaining, and Dunbar is ex an exceptionally entertaining presenter, and like the other panels from last, from like last year and the year before, on this academic track, were informative, but some of them were you know drier than, Drier than that desert area that uh, the particular area of the Egyptian desert where um, uh, where that where the uh, steam speed wagon foundation helicopter got shot down in in uh, Stardust Crusaders. Just to keep going with the JoJo's here, stay on target. So that's a nice little balance there. Um. We haven't announced a lot of other guests for next year's Comoricon yet. We have um, the band. We have a band announced. Um, they have Acme, which is a Visual K band from Japan. I did some checking. I didn't see much in terms of Anna songs that they've done uh, as yet. I just need to dig more, but that's okay. I've I've been meaning to go to one of these concerts at Comoricon at some point, and maybe next year is going to be the year. Other than that, um, as far as this comment went, very well, good. Um, the construction is done from last year. Last year, I had, the convention was being heavily remodeled. This time, it's done. Um, and I'll say 
the acoustics uh, actually of the convention center changed dramatically, at least to the wing that Kamora Khan is in. The way I'd explain it is, describe it as like, the first few years of Kamora Khan, I always kind of walked around with my earbuds in my, in my ears, even if I wasn't listening to my iPod or my podcast on my phone or that sort of thing, just because the, the place is echoey and the volume is kind of overwhelming, can get overwhelming and that sort of thing. I mean, I'm... I'm on Spectrum. I have difficulty filtering out outside noise. Um, I have to kind of concentrate if you're having a conversation with someone in a very noisy environment, like a restaurant or that sort of thing. So being able to walk through the main sort of corridor area where Comoricon was for the con convention, have it still be busy and active and lots of people, but not feel like I have to have my uh, earbuds in to be overwhelmed was wonderful. And again, I don't know if it's a case of, oh, we, with the remodel, we've changed like these little bits here and there, which have uh, changed the acoustic profile, or if it's something else entirely. I can't say. But that was a great bit. Other than that, um, at the convention, we did have a screening. Actually, no, we had a big screening. Uh, it's not a movie that wasn't out before. Um, in fact, it's available on Amazon at this moment, I think. I'll try to find a referral link and put the doobly doo. Um, Penguin Highway is the film. It is a anime, more of the, the, the kids' film variety. And the premise of it is it's in the set in this suburban, not rural, but suburban modern Japanese town where all of a sudden, a bunch of penguins just show up out of the blue. And our main, main, our main character is a kind of precocious younger kid, like 10, 11, 12. And he's at the age where he's trying to be, to, to seem so very, very grown up. You want to be grown up. You, and so you put on the airs of being grown up. Uh, where on uh, the sense of oh, I'm gonna I want I want to drink coffee because grown ups drink coffee, and never mind your taste buds aren't matured yet. Uh, your mouth may not handle the heat very well, and the fact that coffee is very bitter is bitter and acquired taste, and maybe your taste buds haven't matured to the point where you're you're down with the bitter yet. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm gonna drink my coffee. I'm gonna drink it black. That sort of thing. Uh, and. So we've got that about a protagonist, and he's starting, we're at that age where he's like, probably closer to 12 or 13, like 12, because we also, the point where these characters are also, like, boys are starting to notice girls and vice versa, and the main character, there is a dental assistant at the dentist's office, because, I think like 12, because he's, yeah, 12 is the right age, I think, because he's also got, still losing tooth, still losing his baby teeth, and... Like, there's a uh, dental assistant uh, woman at the dentist's office where he's going to have his teeth checked and that sort of thing. Cause he, and who he's, who he's got a bad crush on and that sort of thing. And the, the main thrust of the story becomes, okay, so, um, penguins. Where are the penguins coming from? Because there ain't a zoo around here. Ain't a zoo for miles. There wouldn't be a truck from a zoo going through here. Nor an aquarium. You gotta take like a big long train ride to the next town to get to an aquarium that would have penguins. So how did the penguins get here? The mystery involved from there and things get fantastical in kind of that sort of Ghibli and Shink not Shinkai, um uh, Jinkai, director of Summer Wars. Um, if I can bring this up without making too much noise on the computer, so I can remind myself of the director of Summer Wars. Wait, I know how to do this without making keyboard noises, but I can use the wonders of Mar the marvels of modern technology. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I nobody's made a. I've never seen a cell phone case that does, found a cell phone case that has um. 
Don't panic in large friendly letters. Somebody needs to make that. If somebody's making that and has that on Etsy and like it works with a uh, LG G6, uh, post that in the uh, show notes. Especially if you're, like, you're the one who's doing it, because that that's be something I'd be interested in. Director of Summer Wars. That is Hosoda, Mamoru Hosoda. Okay, it it's at that Hosoda, um, so the Hosoda Ghibli spectrum of in terms of the anime family kids adventure film, where things get fantastic. There's some peril, but nothing too dramatic. It's got a bit of kids on bikes going on to it, except without the actual bikes, like. In terms of lots of kids running around in the woods in their own their suburban town, hunting down what's where the penguins are coming from and that sort of thing, more or less barely being under uh, adult supervision, which I mean that is a that is l- feels like it's still more of a thing in Japan than the United States. I mean, kids' first errand is a th- is a reality show thing for a reason. So I guess that's what I'm fine with that. Um, like that doesn't, like, of course I'm fine with that. I, I did a reviews earlier of, uh, of tales from the loop, which is the, like the kids on bikes, science fiction, alternate universe art book. Anyway. So it, it's got a, a, some like kids on bikes action there. So if you like that kind of story, though, with lighter on the peril compared to something then like, you know, it, Something more on uh, E.T. level of fantasticness and associated peril. That's kind of the point I would put at that. There's a little bit of blue humor to the story, but otherwise it's fine. Not, anyway, other than that, uh, Komorkan was great. Picked up some stuff. Picked up Get a Robo Armageddon because that, after having played um, Super Robot Wars V, I maybe want to watch the show considerably more, and they, they had it there. Um, I've upgraded my copy of Arcadia of My Youth, the movie... The Blu-ray version, because I, I have the old Enemigo version. It's on, you know, it's right there on the shelf behind me. But if you're to upgrade to the Blu-ray, because it's got commentary, and also again, I'm planning on giving that a rewatch before I play Super Robot Wars T, and among many other things. So that covers the basis for this year's Comoricon, and I'll be going next year. It will be the first weekend in November. So if anyone else is going to next year's Kimura Con, um, or want to share their stories of Kimura, of this year's Kimura Con, please post in the sh- in the comments below. Additionally, if you cosplayed, I would like to see pictures of what you cosplayed as. Uh, feel free to post pictures to your, or links to your Flickr, or Tumblr, uh, or what have you account, again, in the show notes. Um, I just keep it safe for work. I mean, the con rules require safe for work, but there were, there are some late night panel stuff for less for bluer cosplay. Anyway, until next time, catch you later. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.